Hi guys. I know what you must be thinking. What the fuck is this shit? Don't worry because if you are super otaku hater and you want to kill everyone who walks in the street and doesn't shower themselves. It's okay, the door is right there. But don't forget we are all part of the same shit. So, if you, like me, want to analyze your shit, you are welcome. Now, that everything is clear, we can start. So, yeah. I was very bored on a hot day when I started to remember a lot of anime movies that I used to see when I was a nerd otaku kid and I realized that there are a lot of good films in the Japanese industry that now I see them differently. And one of those movies is Ko no Katakai and in English a silent voice or the shape of voice. If you know a little about this film and you are interested in seeing it, I recommend you stop the video and go straight to see it. But if you have seen the movie or you are not interested in it, you are welcome to this explanation. A Silent Voice is a Japanese animated drama produced by Kyoto Animation and released in September 2016 in Japan. The film was directed by Naoko Yamada, who also directed other Kyoto Animation productions like Keon and Tamako Market, and also written by Riko Yoshida who is known for being the screenwriter of popular series like Dragon Ball, Digimon, and Violet Evergarden. In my personal opinion, the most important participation in the creation of this movie is Ken Kusho, who was the composer of the music in the film, one of the essential elements to understand and connect with a silent voice plot and development. Besides, the shape of voice it's based on a manga of the same name written by Yoshitaki Ima, a young manga artist that started its career with Ko no Katakai in 2013. In recap, A Silent Voice is a story about a young man called Ishida Shawaya and his journey, of being the bully of a deaf girl in school to a person that completely lost his communication with the world and doesn't know how to hear others. This it's not a love story as many people think, this is a drama that explains how we take root to the feelings of our childhood and how they become an internal demons if we don't learn how to communicate them. It's about redemption, about how we hate ourselves for being who we are, about living in a world, in silence. From here, I'm going to explain each element of the movie that supports my theory according to the order of the events in the film. So, if now you want to see it, go away. Careful with the spoilers guys, please. The movie starts with a prologue. There we can see a point of light that seems to have one person in the inside, at the same time we hear drops falling in the water with a beating heart in the background. Then, we see a sequence of Ishida before making suicide. He sells his things, he quit his job, he gives the money to his mother, finally, he walks to a bridge, and he sees children playing with small fireworks. Then the scene is cut, and we see him walking between the cherry trees. At this moment we hear the song that it has been playing in the background. The first act starts with an opening montage with the song My Generation of the Who, where we see Shawaya and his friends as kids doing mischief and begin Troublemaker. This moment shows us the contrast between Ishida as an insecure and reserved teenager, like the notes from the first song that sound like locked voices in a cave, to the kid Ishida that it's happy and naughty, like My Generation that is a fast and motivated song. Then, the school time starts and Nishimiya arrives in Ishida's class. In the beginning, everything is pretty normal, as the condition of Shoko is new for them, they are genuine interest in her because they think she's weird. At this time, we can hear Ro, a slow and peaceful song.
but as they start to know her more and to realize that they can't communicate with her as they normally do, they start to reject and bully her and especially Ishida and his friends. A curious fact is that in the manga, the pranks and games that Shaoya and his friends do, he calls them value tests that are stopped because an older kid started to mess with them so his friends got scared and that makes Ishida angry. From then on, he takes revenge with Nishimiya, and he says one of the most disturbing sentences that I have ever read, I thank God for putting a new toy in my way. The more they bother Nishimiya, the faster the music speeds up, this sequence culminates at the moment when we can notice that Uyeno and Kawai explicitly reject her and Shaoya confronts her. At this moment we hear the song LVS at the time that Ishida says to Nishimiya that he can't understand her and that being deaf is going to have consequences for Nishimiya. By letting it be known that deep down he understood that she was different and for that reason, she would always be treated differently. Then Shoko's mother contacts the school for the loss of the hearing aids and the headmaster goes to Ishida's class. There, the teacher who knowing what was happening never did anything, reveals that Shaoya is the one who made bullying to Nishimiya and the rest of his friends blame him as well. After that, the situation turns around and now it is Shaoya who receives bullying from his classmates and ironically, from his ex-friends who cut off the ties with him, this being represented through the following animation. So now we can see the consequences of Ishida's actions on others because when his mother goes with him to apologize to Nishimiya's mother, she tears off a hoop. Then, when he goes back to school, Shaoya sees Shoko cleaning his desk and that makes him angry. At that moment, we cannot completely understand what is happening, but in the manga, the situation is clearer. A way that Ishida's classmates find to hurt him, was writing in his desk hurtful things that after, even Uyeno admitted that she did in such a way that he could not directly hear what they were saying to him, just as they did with Nishimiya by taking away her apparatus and speaking badly of her knowing that she would not be able to hear them. Right there they start a fight, in which Ishida repeats that he can't understand Nishimiya and where she finally reveals her feeling. <laughs> At that moment, when Ishida fails to understand Nishimiya is when he loses communication with the rest of the world. And there the first act ends. The second act starts in the present when we see Ishida as a teen doing the last thing he was planning to do before commit suicide, go to talk with Nishimiya and return her notebook. At this moment we realize that Shaoya has become a completely different person. He even breaks the barrier he had with Nishimiya, and he has learned sign language to communicate with her. An important fact is that according to Ken Kusho, the composer of the soundtrack, as Ishida learns sing language in the movie, the music starts to change and suffer transformations. When they meet, there's no music, and something happens in Shaoya's mind when he does the signal of friends. So in the first scene when he is on the bridge, he remembers this moment and decides not to commit suicide until Nishimiya never cries again because of him. Soon we follow Ishida to his high school. He can't see the people to their faces, he can't talk with them, he can't listen to them. 
This lack of communication makes him a person isolated from society but in the same way, a person that is afraid of what the society thinks about him. So this frustration leads him to invent conversations that others may have about him and that pushes him deeper into his suffering. But Ishida sees someone trying to steal a guy's bicycle, and he sees himself in that boy, so he decides to help him. That's how he meets Nagatsuka, who is completely the opposite of Shawaya, but he's the one who breaks with the scheme of Ishida's life and for the first time, an ex fall. <laughs> then after this, we can see how Ishida tries to get together all of his primary classmates, so he could make Nishimiya happy. One day Ishida meets Nishimiya on the bridge, and she confesses her feelings for him. Even Shawaya makes an effort to understand what she is saying, instead of hearing Suki that means I like you, he hears Zuki or Moon, and he says the moon is beautiful. A curious thing is that according to the famous novelist Natsum Soski the translation of the English sentence I love you in Japanese, it will be the moon is beautiful. So many events after, all of them meet in an amusement park and they have fun like they were a normal group of friends, which to add is a very disturbing scene for me. But then Ishida sees Shimada, his friends from the past, and everything goes back to the way it was before. Ishida can't look the people to their faces, he rejects every form of communication and his friends return to being the same shit they were before. The reason why when they accuse Ishida for his actions he attacks them, and they end up separating leaving only Yuzuoyu and Nishimiya. The third act continues with what we were seeing before, Ishida doesn't spot his mission, even he is suffering in the inside he stills want to make Nishimiya happy. But he failed. Nishimiya's grandmother dies. The music starts to be slow until it finally stops. Something is broken. Shoko is broken, no matter how hard Ishida tries to fix her. And this led us to the climax of the story. Nishimiya, Yuzoyu, their mother and Ishida go to a firework festival, and at some moment, Shoko stands up and she leaves. The fact that she says thank you instead see you later is a premonition of what is going to happen. Yuzoyu sends Ishida to look for her camera to the apartment. When he arrives, he sees that everything is dark except for the lights of the fireworks that come from the balcony. At that moment he realizes that Nishimiya is stood in the rail, at the same time that we hear FRC. We now see different perspectives of Ishida. The kimono. The slow motion. The moving shots. The curtain. From this moment on we see that Nishimiya jumped but this time Ishida grabbed her, and finally, he is released. He sees his school. His mother. The blinding lights. The yellow and red fireworks. Ishida thinks about the past. How he never apologizes to Nishimiya for what he did and how he would have liked to know what did she think about him in that time. Then he saves Nishimiya, and he is the one who falls. We see different things falling. 
The sweat drops. The tap. The egg. Ishida. The color in this scene is very important. The purple and dark tones in the water. The red of the blood that mixes with the red and yellow lights of the ambulance, just as we had seen before. The strong contrast with the hospital, which is illuminated and has light colors, such as light blue and green. In the fourth act, Ishida is in the hospital in a coma. We see that Uyeno does not allow Nishimiya to see Shaoya, and she gets mad with her, to the point where Uyeno starts hitting Shoko and finally her mother defends her. At this moment I think it is very important to empathize with the fact that I truly believe that Uyeno does not change her personality and her cruelty in the whole story, something that makes me hate part of the end, but I will go there soon. Nishimiya feels guilty, and she decides to get back together all of Ishida's friends and apparently, she makes it. In one of those days, she has a dream in which she sees Ishida, then she wakes up and decides to look for him. Ishida wakes up from the coma, and they meet each other on the bridge. This is an essential scene to understand the story. Both speak and ask forgiveness to each other and themselves. Ishida finally breaks the last barrier he had with Nishimiya, and he touches her. This seals a pact between the two of them, to understand the pains of their childhood, their failures in communication and mainly to accept themselves completely. The next day Ishida goes back to school and Nishimiya supports him all the time. He has a panic attack when he enters to his classroom because of all the pressure that he feels and because he stills cannot look the people to their faces. Now is Nagatsuka the one who supports him and helps him to meet the rest of the group. They all go to the school festival and with the song lit, Ishida finally uncovers his ears and looks to all the people and their faces. He sees his closest relationships, his family, his friends. He finally learns how to communicate. He doesn't hate himself anymore. He doesn't in a world in silence. He finally finds the shape of his voice. The same point of light of the beginning is closing the movie. But now it has not one person in the inside. Now it has two. It seems to me that in general, this is a very difficult film to summarize. Doing this has even helped me when I'm asked what it's the movie about, but I still don't know completely. In the end, this is a circular story. Different events and feelings have the same foundations. 
the conclusion in which Ishida finally succeeds to overcome his fears and what was holding him. That's why the real shape of voice is when Ishida calls Nishimiya for her first name. That's when he finally speaks. I know it sounds stupid. But think about it. In the entire story, he is always holding his feelings, his fears, his suffering, so at this moment he is so desperate that he finally releases his voice. And when Nishimiya apologizes and breaks herself in front of Ishida's mother, we finally understand her. We see her suffering and depression. The complicated relationship she had with her mother, caused by her mother's suffering as she was abandoned by her husband. The trauma that Yuzuyu had with the suffering of her sister and expressing that in dead animal pictures. How Shoko desperately wanted to help Ishida, but he didn't listen. So in the end, after all of her optimistic and forced smiles, she releases herself, and she finds the shape of her voice. This story is about who we are. The journey of life. What makes us different and special? From the inside. Of inner beauty. That's why all the time in the film we see images of nature, revealing nature as true beauty. So in the movie we see this in the scenes and the feeling they express. Like the scene in the roller coaster, when Sahara tells Ishida she is afraid, but she still wants to try it, and she releases from the handle, unlike Ishida who is holding strong. Making a metaphor of what they lived and how they feel. And yeah. I know it's kind of weird that the main character is the bully, a person that did something wrong, a person that provokes suffering in others. But that's exactly why I think this is a beautiful story. Because in real life, there are no good or bad people. There's no only black and white. There's only grey, and also shit, a lot, I am sorry, sometimes you are the bully or sometimes you're the victim. You could be any one of them. Or like Ishida, be both. Because in some cases we are so immersed in our world and individuality that we don't look at the person next door, we don't empathize, we don't listen. That is what a silent voice tells us. To look, to love, to recognize, to understand, to communicate and to listen to others.